part two of the series, The Word of God. We're continuing in part two. What part is this? Part two. Now, last week we talked about the importance of the Word of God. And I asked three questions, and I'm going to ask these three questions again. Because you have to keep these three questions in mind as you are receiving the Word today. And not only today, but for the rest of your life. For the rest of your life. Uh, and these three questions are, number one, is the Word of God important to you? Yes. Amen. There's one yes, Amen. but you don't have to answer. Uh, 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 but thank you, brother, for that. Yes, it is important. Is the word, but but the, each individual need to answer this for themselves. Each individual is a rhetorical question in the sense of of you need to answer this. Is the word of God important to me? Then you have to answer the next question: How important is God's word to me? Because it's important, just like you have things in your home that are important, but some things take priority over other things. Some things take priority, so some things are important, but some things are not as important as other things. Y'all gotta forgive me, I'm kinda uh, uh, anal that way, this stuff is out of place, I wanna replace it. But, <laughs> but some things are, how important is it to you? See, you got to put a standard, you got to put a, 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 a level of importance. We learned last week that Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So is God's word important for you to live by? And we found out in Job 23 that, that Job uh, had said these words that I esteem, that I uphold, that I, I count more, more valuable the word of God than my necessary food. Is it that important to you? See, is it, is it important enough that, that it, the word of God comes before the food that's required to sustain my body? See, God has a very strong importance on his word. We found in that, that if you read Psalms 119, in Psalms 119, the, the whole chapter of Psalms 119, which is 176 verses, every verse speaks of the word of God. Every verse, and that's the longest chapter in the Bible. So if God put in the longest chapter in the Bible, in every verse, in the longest chapter in the Bible, his word and the, the emphasis on his word, and you'll hear things like your statutes, your commandments, uh, your laws, your precepts. You know, in, in other words, uh, you'll hear different phrases that, that pertain to the word of God. And all through the Bible, you will see these different phrases. So when you see those phrases, you know that they are pertaining to what? The word of God. The word of God. So and the last question is this. How important is his word to him for me? How important is his word to him for me? We found out that God's word is so important to him for us that he made his word flesh and it dwelt among us. He made his word flesh. He sent his son in a, in a, a born of a virgin in the body of a man and he made his word flesh. St. John chapter 1 verse 1 says this, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And the same he, uh, that, 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 that he made flesh and it dwelt among us. He made his word flesh to dwell among us. So today we're going to be talking about the word and as we go through the word today, if you realize the importance of it, Today we're going to be talking about being a doer of that word. Being what? A doer of the word. In other words, applying God's word. Because it doesn't make any sense. Now, I was a school teacher for 17 years. You know, if, if I taught something, I always taught something in mind of the students applying it. Well, before I became an ROTC instructor, I was a coach, a football coach, a track coach. And see, and, 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 and if I gave instruction, see, also the word instruction is another uh, word pertaining to the word of God. If I gave instructions to an athlete and that athlete didn't use those instructions, that athlete didn't play. Mm -hmm. 
Because to get on the field, you got to follow the instructions. Mm -hmm. If I taught a hurdler, and, and, I, and I, was a, I was a hurdle coach, I was a pole vault coach, I was a sprint coach when it came to track and field. Long jump coach, I, caught very, I taught, taught and coached various different, different uh, events on the track and field. But if I showed a, 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 a pole vaulter technique of how to pole vault and he didn't use it, he never got to pole vault in a meet. If I showed a hurdler how to hurdle and he didn't use it, then that hurdler would not get to participate in the meet. Why? Be because if they didn't use the technique and the information and the knowledge that I gave them, how to set up their blocks, just with the basics, how to set up their blocks, how to come out of their blocks, how to go over the hurdles. See, you don't jump hurdles, you run hurdles. Let me say that again. You don't jump hurdles, you run hurdles. Because to jump something, you got to stop. Well, a hurdler never stops. You take the hurdles. There's 10 hurdles in a 110-meter hurdle event. And for the females, a 100-meter hurdle event, there's 10 hurdles. And you got to take the hurdle as you sprint to the finish line. And you got to take it in stride. With, but if you got to jump a hurdle, you come to the hurdle, you stop, and you jump. It's a revelation of a difference. So in God's word, he gives us instructions and he wants us to follow those instructions. We have some men here that are supervisors on their jobs. We have some women here that are supervisors on their job. And when you're training someone, you're teaching someone to learn that job or they come into the workplace. <clears throat> Even if you're not their supervisor, but you've been asked to show them a few things to help get them acclimated to the workplace. And then you give them instructions and then they decide, well, I'm not going to use not a thing you told me. How successful do you think they're going to be that first week? They're probably going to fall flat on their face. And then you as an instructor, you would be thinking, why should I waste my time? Why should I waste? You know, my son, one of my sons, I'm not going to tell you which one, but, uh, but one of my sons used to always ask me for advice. And then he would go and do what he wanted to do anyway, his own way. And so I started telling him, why call me if you're not going to do what I say? Amen. And that's what the word tells us. Why call me if you're not going to do what I say? So it is important. So if you have your Bibles, open up your Bibles to St. John chapter 8. St. John chapter 8. Now we're going to talk about this one word called, right now, called disciple. What is a disciple? I'm glad you asked. A disciple <laughs> is, a disciple is a follower of Christ and his teachings. Now what does it mean a follower? That not only that you follow him around, but as you follow him, you observe what he does. You observe what he does and you observe what he is teaching and saying, and then you apply that to your life. So a disciple, see the Bible says, go into all the world and make disciples. He says, and now, now, now in the King James, it doesn't use the term make disciples. It uses the word and teaching all men to observe. We're going, we're going to St. John chapter 8. I haven't said the scripture yet. I'm just quoting other scriptures right now. Just giving you a basis. Giving you your foundation. See, so, 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 we are disciples of the Lord if we follow the Lord Jesus Christ and his teaching. If we're not following him and his teaching, then we're not Christ's disciple. Okay, y'all got that? Yes. We're not Christ's disciple. And if we're not his disciple, then most likely we're not saved. Okay? Most likely. I'm not saying you're not. I'm saying most likely. Okay? Now, however, there are some that, that sit amongst him, that sit amongst him and, and, and still didn't get the revelation. For an example, Judas, Judas walked with Jesus for three years, just like the other disciples, just like the other apostles. And Judas still had his own agenda. Walk with him three years, heard the same message. See, I, that's why I said last week, you can sit in the same room, hear the same word that everybody else hears, and some will go out victorious and others will still go out defeated. They will go out the same way they came in because it's how you took it in. And if you don't take it in in good ground, in a good heart, ready to receive, 
then it won't bear fruit. And God wants you to bear fruit because he said that a branch that doesn't bear fruit is no good to him. The only good it should be is cut down, thrown in the fire. So it is important that as you receive God's word, and you know that you are a disciple, that you are a follower of Christ, Jesus Christ, and his teaching. Look what he says in St. John chapter 8. Are you there? Yes. St. John chapter 8, verse 31. It says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him, If ye continue in my word. If you continue where? In where? In where? My word. Now I'm convinced. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciple. Indeed. Okay, now indeed, what does that mean indeed? Now this is in the King James. So indeed means two things. For sure. Truly. For sure. Definitely. If you continue where? In my, in my word. See, there are people that come and they join church. They'll come up, shake the preacher's hand, they'll get their name on the roll, but they don't continue in the word. They fall away. See, we talked about that last week with the sower in the sea. They'll receive it with joy, but when trials come for the word's sake, they fall away. Or, or they'll receive it, but, but it's amongst thorns. It's amongst thorns. And all the worldliness, the deceitfulness of this, of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things come in and choke the word out of them. So they don't continue in it. And then there's those that receive it, I said last week, by the wayside. You're, you're here, but it's like going through one ear and coming out the other. Uh, yeah, I'm not even listening. I'm just here. It's like on the wayside, just on the ground. Huh? It's like throwing seeds on the concrete out there. It's not going to take root because there's no dirt on it. So there, there, it, it needs to get in. It needs to get in, deep in, so that when you receive the word in a good and prepared heart, It'll take root and the roots will be strong and deep. And then when your branches grow, they'll grow and then uh, 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 and as it grows, it will produce. It will produce. So he said, if you now also indeed, indeed is also deed, the word deed also means in what you do. The word deed. Also in what you do. I mean, in this case, yes, it means definitely, for sure. But also, when you look at the word deed, the word deed means in what you do, in your deeds. If you continue in my word, then you are my disciple in deeds. In, all, in other words, when you read James chapter 1, verse, verse 22, it says, Be a doer of the word and not a hearer only, deceiving yourself. But then when you go a little bit farther down, he says, because, matter of fact, go to James. And we're going to come back here, but go to James chapter 1. Go to James chapter 1. Amen. Now I'm going to read verse 21 and 22 and then I'm going to jump down to verse 25. Now don't get ahead of me, okay? Please don't get ahead of me. Don't jump down to 25 yet. Stop it. Don't go there. Okay. <laughs> I, I caught you. Okay. Here it is. Here it is. He says, he says, wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Lay aside all that other garbage and all that other stuff and receive with meekness the engrafted word that can do what? Save your soul. Not only save you from hell fire, but save you day by day. Your mind, your will, and your emotions, and all those things that where you live and that you have to do with. But he says, but once you receive that, he says, but be ye doers of the word. Be a what? Doer of the word and not hearers only. Now when you are here only, look what he says after that. Deceiving your own self. I always use deceiving, fooling, and tricking your own knucklehead self. <laughs> okay? See, nobody, the devil don't even have to fool you. If you come to church or you hear the word of God on the radio or you read your Bible and then you don't apply it. You deceive.
deceived yourself. That's like me applying for a job, going to that job, and I know I need instructions to be able to accomplish that, that job, but I don't listen to anything anybody have to say. I told y'all last week, Brother Scott really blessed me uh, a couple of weeks ago when we cleaned the property and cut the grass and everything because, you know, I was on that ride lawnmower and look, if I didn't listen to his instructions, I wouldn't have been able to use that lawnmower because I didn't know what every control did. So I would have got on that lawnmower, I would have sat there looking dumb. <laughs> All right, come on, lawnmower. <laughs> do the French stone on it. <laughs> you ever, ever do? It ain't going nowhere. And then even if it moves, if I push it, it ain't cutting no grass. So I was playing with it. I knew how to turn it on. But then the battery was dead. The tires needed inflating. He took, he hooked me up. He, he inflated the tires. He put his jumper cables on the battery. And then I heard something. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm moving now. No, I still wasn't moving. I got it started, but I wasn't moving. So he gave me some instructions. He said, look, Pastor, this go, makes it go forward. This makes it go back. This lowers your blade or raises your blade. This makes your blade turn. If you don't do this, no matter how low or how high you go and how you're rolling down in the grass, you're not cutting a thing. He didn't say it like that. I'm, I'm ad living a little bit. But, but he let me know that what it had to do. And if I didn't do what he told me that it had to do, no matter how, I could have been man, rolling all over the field out there, not cutting nothing. But he had to give me what? Instruction. And I had to do what he told me to do. Or it would have benefited me how much? Not, not, a, not a dog. It, I, it wouldn't have benefited me not at all. So when we do not apply what we have learned from the word of God to our lives on a daily basis, then it benefits us not. We must apply. So he said here once again, so be ye a doer of the word and not a hearer only, deceiving, fooling, tricking your own knucklehead self. I'm sorry about that, own knucklehead. But look down at verse 25. Verse 25 says, but whosoever, who is whosoever? Say me. Whosoever. Say me. Me. Point at yourself. Say me. Me. Who is whosoever? Me. Me. Say, but whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty. That's another word for the word of God. The perfect law of liberty. Wow. Man, they got all those terms for the word. Yes. It says, and do what? Continue therein. See, what did he say over in St. John? If you continue in my word, continue means to apply it. And continue, he says here, once again, but whosoever look into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the, what's that next word? Work. 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 See, see, indeed. See, because if you're doing the work, you're doing the work. See, indeed, that D also means definitely, for surety. But that deed means also the, uh, the things that you do. C go with me to Luke very quickly. Watch this. Luke. Go to Luke chapter 11. Say it down when you get there. We're still going back to John. Amen. Amen. But go to Luke chapter 11. Amen. Amen. Y'all beat me. Luke chapter 11. Amen. Look with me at verse 27. Watch this. Jesus had cast out some devils and, and he healed some folks, but he cast out devils. Then somebody argued with him about, well, he cast out devils by, by, by devils, Bob. And then Jesus told him, you know, if Satan cast out Satan, his house divided, the house divided, can't stand against itself, you know, so on, so on, so on. But he gets down to here. Uh, he gets down here to, to uh, uh, verse 27. And this woman, now, uh, she tries to butter Jesus up. Y'all would call it in, in some vernaculars on your job, somebody sucking up. You ever said that about somebody? Somebody brown nosing, somebody eating cheese, you know, all those terms about <laughs> she was, you know. Now, I figured she was just giving Jesus a compliment. 
But the way it looked, I mean, she just comes out of nowhere. You read that chapter, you'll see it seems like after he did all this healing and everything, and he he he, he talks to these Jews who, who's trying to put down what he's doing, and he put them in their place, then uh, she says this, verse 27. And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice. In other words, she made herself heard. And said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the paps which thou hast sucked. In other words, you know, amen. And, the, you know, bless your mama. Blessed is your mama who bare thee, and the breast that you fed from. You know, when she sucking up, she just came out from nowhere with that. But watch this. Watch this. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the what? Word of God. Hear the what? Word of God. Hear the what? Word of God. Hear the word of God and do what with it? Keep it. And keep it. And keep it. See, this is how you get blessed. God is trying to tell us how to show and trying to show us how to be blessed, how to get blessed, how to stay blessed. Once again, how to be blessed, how to get blessed, how to be blessed, and how to stay blessed. He is showing us over and over and over again, but yet we reject his blessings. 